Hello, and welcome to my Stardew Valley Mid-Max playthrough and guide. In this playthrough, I'll be trying to earn as much money as possible in as little time as possible, and eventually reach the 100% perfection in the game. Um, I'm going to be using the Guarantee Year 1 completable option, as well as the Seed option. Let's go ahead and begin. The first thing I do when starting any Stardew Valley game is change my tools in a way I like them. Then I'll go to Options, Always Show Tool Hit Location, that's an important one, it shows you where your tool is about to hit, and then Zoom Out all the way. Zoom buttons are just for convenience, but um, zooming out all the way will let you see a lot of stuff. Um, I'm going to move my bed closer, then I'm going to move the TV in a second here. Grab the parsnip seeds and we get started. So, got the footage sped up just because there's a lot of days, a lot of time, and I don't need to commentate over every single thing we do, especially when we get to some more tedious actions like chopping uh, in the mines and whatnot. But yeah, um, back to the idea of being zoomed out, it's very important as you can just see more. You can see more around the farm. When you go to the mines, you can see like more enemies or ore deposits you wouldn't have been able to see in the first place. And there's really no reason not to. It's you can still see like pretty much everything, so I have to always have that as an option. So now I made a I chopped enough wood just to make a chest. And right now what I'm doing is I checked for spring onions, there were no spring onions. I hurry back to the ranch, um, or the barn, farm, whatever you want to call it. Um, you have to be there at 11 o'clock sharp to meet Jazz, that's when she comes out of her room. Then we're going to come here and meet Leia. Yeah, so first thing on this day, I'm going to try to meet everybody, fulfill that quest. Also pick up any forageables I see. We meet Haley. I don't really care if anybody sees me digging through the trash right now because um, we don't have any friendship with them to lose anyway. So right there I actually made a mistake. I was like, oh, I forgot to meet Jody and Vincent. Um, but that's perfectly fine because we still have plenty of time. We might be a little behind, but we still have plenty of time. And it's okay if we waste a little bit of time here and there. Obviously, I want to minimize that to max minimum run. I want to do the best I can, but there will be some mistakes here and there because it would take way too long to just to retry every day. Now, saying that, I do retry sometimes, like when we get to the mines, if like I die or something really goes wrong, I'm just having really bad luck that day. I'll reset the day, try again, try to get better luck, just because it's kind of necessary sometimes to get the run you're looking for. Um, this is sort of my second attempt at a min-max run. I've done one before, but I've only gotten to about the end of spring. This run I'm re recording right now, I've made it to winter. So I've done three months, and I've recorded all of it. I haven't done any voiceovers yet, hence why I'm doing that now. Um, and this run was actually done a while ago, a few months ago. So I'm kind of recording this voiceover a little bit later, but I don't want to start completely over, do a new run, do a new recording. But I wanted to still share this content because I feel like I did a pretty good job at a min-max run here and I'd like to share it just if anybody was interested so yeah we met every well we met a lot of the townsfolk we had to go to the beach to meet Elliot um Elliot's a hard one to meet because he only comes out of his little uh, shack for just a little small amount he doesn't go to the town or anything Beach also usually has some forageables. I think we got a oyster. So we're gonna go ahead and donate the quartz. The seed I used actually was for that quartz in a trash can. I believe we got it from 
I used the random seed to guarantee we have that course to donate to the museum so we get that little extra money. And we meet Clint. And now we're heading to get that daffodil and I forget where we're headed next. If I stop like that, I'm probably like checking my notes to see what I need to do next. And honestly, as I'm voicing over this, I completely forget. Oh, we meet Emily. Emily must be in her room earlier, which is why we couldn't meet her earlier. So I think maybe it's necessary to meet her at this time. Um. But yeah, we're kind of just walking around town, getting whatever we can. Um, kind of have to kill some time until 6 o'clock when Sebastian comes out of his room. Because he only comes out of his, like, he's in his room all day until like 6 or 6.30, so. I think we're heading to the Joja Mart now. We already met Abigail and Pierre, so don't have to worry about that. And this is where we meet. Sam and Pam and also Shane. And even though Shane didn't really say anything to us there, it still counts as meeting him, so don't have to worry about that. Checking the trash can. Yeah, so an important thing, always check the trash cans because you can get extra random stuff and Scythe as many weeds as you can. The one of the big deals on this first day is getting as many mixed seeds as possible. It was basically free crops, free money, free farming XP. Not not really for the money. It's mainly for the farming XP and the um ha having like things to eat, give things to give you energy because we have plenty of time on these days, but we run out of energy really fast, so finding forageables to eat, finding ways of getting energy back is our most important thing right now, and kind of the thing we need to focus on to maximize our days. And when we fish, we're going to be fishing a lot of, um, like, fish that'll be able to restore our energy, specifically chub. Chub is the best one for energy because it gives you the most energy for like what you'd sell it for you wouldn't be able to sell it for as much like as other fish that's what I'm trying to say and here's Robin and Demetrius and we're still just killing some time it's not too much we can do on the first day can't it's not like we can fish um, I have seen some interesting, like, min-max runs where they farm clay on the first day using a pattern, um, where you find a clay on your farm, then, like, you know exactly where the next piece of clay is gonna be. It's an interesting concept, uh, so, I don't know if Concerned Ape, the creator of the game, changed that or is gonna change that, but... I don't do that in this run. It's definitely the most profitable thing, profitable thing on a, the first day, but we're gonna go without doing that. So we finally meet Sebastian, and now we can finally head back to the farm where we're just gonna work on clearing weeds, clearing. Yeah, right there. I just quickly make sure I met everybody that I can, and sure enough, we're at 27 out of 28 people. The last person would be Willie. Willie we will meet tomorrow when he comes back from his fishing trip. So yeah, I actually have to plant those parsnip seeds, which we don't really care about for the money. We want for the farming XP, because we want enough XP to unlock sprinklers, because in the summer we're going to plant a lot of star fruit, and we want um, just the regular sprinklers, quality sprinklers. Not just the regular sprinklers. So, now we're chopping down a bunch of trees. I'm exhausted, but I'm going to level up in 
probably going to level up in forging today. And every time you level up in a skill, you wake up with full energy, no matter what, no matter if you overexert yourself, no matter if you pass out, no matter what. And we'll also be passing out a lot because um, it's just like the time it takes to get back to your bed. During that time, you could be doing something more productive. You could be fishing, you could be clearing stuff, you could be doing so much. So we need to use that time. And yeah, so we put everything away. I'm taking out wood, making a chest because we'll want a chest for tomorrow when we fish. And yeah, there we go, leveled up foraging. Made a small amount of money from some forgeables and whatnot. And yeah, we're on day two now. Let's get started. Um, have to water the crops. Takes a little bit of time, but need to. I'm bringing one piece of stone. What I'm gonna do with this is give it to Willie because we need to fulfill the quest that I just got. I got a quest to give someone a gift and I'll give us some extra money. And Willie has already zero friendship right now, so giving him just something he doesn't like doesn't matter. We just want to fulfill that quest. So now I'm just fishing. I'm trying to get as many perfect catches as I can. Not for like quality or anything, but for the XP. Every time you get a perfect catch, you get an XP bonus. Every time you get a max cast, also, you get an XP bonus. So, um, you'll notice I got a sunfish on that first one. That's usually a river fish. Um, but Stardew has this weird thing where, at, like, your first catch, no matter what, um, if it if it's like an ocean fish, it'll be an ocean fish, like a sardine or something. But if it tries to be like a piece of trash or something along those lines, it'll replace it with a sunfish so that no matter what, you get a fish on your first catch, which is interesting. I think it's pretty commonly known now between a lot of the Stardew players, but it's an interesting fact. We get our first treasure chest here, and treasure chests are one of the best things because you can get so many good potential items from them. It's always worth it to go for a treasure chest. Right here you see me kind of struggling a bit. This, um, this starter rod, kind of hard, the bar is kind of small. The fish, even though they're kind of slow right now, it's kind of hard with the small bar, so still make do we get the treasure chest and we get 10 pieces of bait not the best thing we can get but it's always worth it to go for a treasure chest because you can get gems including diamonds i think there's a super small chance like a prismatic shard eventually um and then it's also the potential at a neptune's glaive which is a pretty good sword and it makes the mines a lot easier if we get that um, there's also the Broken Triton, which is like a dagger type weapon, which a little worse than the Neptune's Glaive, but still would be really good. So we want one of those. Either one would be fine, preferably Neptune's Glaive, but don't expect it to get it today, right now. But in one of the upcoming days, it's going to be something that we really want to go for. Alright, any seaweed we get, we will probably be eating to get energy back. Um, forget which ocean fish are best for eating if we need energy, but if we need to, we'll eat some ocean fish for energy. But I think we sell most of it um, today to get the fiberglass rod because once we get the fiberglass rod, we can start using bait. And bait is a game changer. Bait pretty much doubles, if not even more than that, like this, the rate at which you get fish bites. So yeah, you see me keep that iridium 
herring, I think. Um, yeah, the iridium herring. So the reason I kept the iridium one rather than like a regular one or whatever is because the higher the quality, the more beneficial it is for eating. For example, like if you have like a regular herring, it's going to sell for like, what, 30 gold. But if you have an iridium, it doubles that value, sells for 60 gold. Say like a herring gives you like, I don't know, 30 points of energy. If it's iridium, it's not going to give you 60, it's not going to give you double, it's going to give you more than that. It's going to give you like 70 or 80. Again, these numbers are just made up, I'm just giving an example of why it's good to keep higher qualities for restoring energy. But we just continue to fish, and I think we just fish for the rest of the night. We want to get as much money as we can um, built up for what is to come. Something I should probably mention is Willie's closes at 5 o'clock, so you want to make sure you buy the fiberglass rod from him before 5 o'clock, and there's a few constraints here, so one is the time, second is the money, you need like 1800 gold to buy the actual rod, and you need some money for bait on top of that, so you need a good amount of money. Um, and then you need to be fishing level 2. So usually you should be able to get fishing level 2 within that time if you're getting mostly perfect catches, um, mostly max casts. Again, I, I've done the, I've played Stardew Valley casually with friends for a good amount of time. So I've done a lot of fishing. I've practiced it. It just it, it's it's a bit tricky. It's one of the trickier mechanics in the game, but um, once you get used to it, it's doable definitely to get to level two within one day I think by the end of today we'll actually get to level three maybe even four I'm not sure but that's basically the goal of to get as much fish as we can to sell and catch as many as we can for the XP now any fish I get that I want to sell I'm just gonna keep in the chest here oh we wow we got a diamond that's pretty impressive impressive luck Diamonds are worth 750 gold, so that's nice. Iridium ore, wow, we're, we got pretty lucky on this second day, I just realized. But, yeah, we want to sell a lot of fish tomorrow, because um, we'll buy some trout soups to help in catching catfish. Catfish are really hard to catch. Trout soup gives us one extra fishing level which will make that bar a little bit bigger, which will help out a lot. Could be the difference between missing a catfish or catching it. Um, so, yeah, get some magma geodes. Those are always nice to have. Um, with geodes at Clint's, opening them, I will be using the geode predictor. That could be considered cheating by some, but again, when you're doing the min-max run, you play by your own rules. You could do whatever you like, so... I... think, like, it's part of the game. Opening geodes, so... Knowing what's gonna come inside of them. I think that's the whole, like... Like, I, I find it fun to, like, plan out accordingly what you get from each geode, calculate all that. I think it's fun, so I'll be doing that. I'll be using the geode predictor. And, yeah, we pass out. We have zero gold, so we don't have to worry about losing money. We level up in fishing to level four, actually. So we don't have to worry about passing out. And that's it for the video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.